Hello everybody and welcome back to Chrono Trigger and this is part 5. And so we just got to, we just escaped from jail. If you remember in the last part. And so now we're going up, up against this uh, Mecha Dragon boss battle. And um, during this battle I did actually have a little bit of trouble because of my method I was using. Um, I was thinking I could just keep spamming Chrono's uh, little spin, a uh, little cycle technique there, and it wouldn't be wouldn't be of anything. Um, but um, what it is is that uh, uh, yeah, see, like like that right there, the head actually heals everything, and it was actually um, healing for more than what I was. Hitting, so to speak, because it would heal constantly, and eventually it does these attacks that actually really hurt. And I would suggest not using any fire attacks um, from Luca there, or using um, using fire whirl because uh, that will just do no damage to the head at all. Um, it will do damage to the wheel and the body, which are actual targets. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, see like this right here, I'm actually using this and I was like, ah, I wonder if it will just like not do as much. And it doesn't hurt the head at all, so uh, yeah, so don't, uh, don't do that. <laughs> uh, really the, the strategy is just focus on attacking the head with just normal attacks. And then that way, eventually, eventually, you'll get rid of the head, and then you won't have to worry about the healing. And um, I mean, I suppose my 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 strategy here would have worked, I guess, but eventually, I was having some difficulty, and yeah, I was I was actually kind of struggling with my HP a little bit there, because as you're seeing, my my HP is gonna dwindle here because this this attack right here actually hurts quite a bit, and so it um, really hurts, really hurts a lot. So just kind of be careful. Just kind of keep everybody above like 40 or 50 HP, so that way you can survive. Um, so yeah, it's so right here. Luca actually dies. And I had to use one of my revives to revive her back, and uh, that was really close right there. And this is me hoping to get using a mid tonic this time. That's actually why they give you the mid tonic there, so you can actually fully heal. And so basically, just. Um, I would probably at some point just have Luca be the healer and Chrono be the attacker so then that way you can get rid of uh, like the head faster so then that way you don't have to worry about the um, about the uh, the healing there so um, I mean I suppose you can also focus on the wheel there so it doesn't do that uh, ram attack there because once you get rid of the, the wheel it actually keeps stationary and then you won't have to worry about that little uh, dash attack it does. So, um, yeah, it's not really, I, I mean, this battle is, it's not exactly hard. It can be hard if you deal with it the wrong way, but, I don't know. I mean, as you can see, I am, I am taking more damage to the head than, um, than it's healing. So, I suppose, technically, I, I probably could just keep going with my method there, but... Eventually, I'm just like, uh, I better just focus on getting rid of the head because um, it's actually actually a little nuisance there for healing. So, right here, I will be um, doing some healing. And then, um, right now, I'm actually, at this point here, uh, like I said, I'm having Chrono focus on attacking the head. And getting rid of that. 
And I'm, I'm avoiding using any any like multi hit ones there because I really want to focus on just just getting rid of the head. And there we go. So I got rid of the head. So now the healing is uh, I'm gonna stop from them. So now I can actually do do the now I can continue on and I can actually I can actually now use the fire whirl if I wanted to. It doesn't do that much, but uh, I mean it's whatever. Oh yeah, that was why they give you those uh, mid tonics there, so that way you can kind of do, like I said, a full heal and and be able to survive survive there when you get really really low like that. They like look at here and she died again. And uh, I think I think that's the last time that she actually dies. I think uh, the rest of this battle, um, I was like okay. Now that's getting more easier. There goes the wheel, so now I can't do the little dash attack anymore. And I'm just using the normal tonics here because I got quite a bit of them. And they actually heal for quite a bit. And um, I do the fire roll right here because um, the body actually does take quite a bit of damage from the fire attack there and it actually finishes it off. So there we go. So we get the emulator teammates there for defeating the dragon here. And we get this little cutscene when we defeat this thing. So I, I believe at this point in time, I don't think the Chancellor is evil. He's just like very strict and and getting the thing there. But I, I don't know. Maybe he's I don't know. I guess he's just being overprotective against the uh, the princess or something. I don't know. It's probably it is uh, an actual bad guy because um, I think I think later on we do deal with with uh, a descendant uh, in this timeline at some point I don't remember when I think it's I think it's near at the end of the game but um, right now we're we're gonna be escaping with um, with Morrow here as well um, I mean you'll see why So she's trying. So right here, she's. Uh, this is looking very familiar. She's trying to pull what she did in 600 AD, and it, I mean it is working, but uh, the Chancellor and um, wait, how did he get free? He was just back there a minute ago. So I guess this is the real Chancellor right here. I guess um, or he got free. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, the King comes actually comes out and tells. Tells her to actually be obedient to before the throne here. And this is where the king is just not understanding what uh, Marl is going through. Um, he, he's just kind of being overprotective and not wanting her to actually like lead the castle or whatever and just kind of be a proper like ruler someday and um so yeah so so right here she gets mad at, at the at her dad and just kind of goes with Bruno and Luca here and we actually escape uh from the castle but as you'll see here not that, but uh, when it goes to black and goes to the next screen here. Yeah, this right here. So right here, they, they actually chase us, but they actually... I don't know why we didn't go to the... I guess it would be to the... Well, if we're looking at it to the left, I don't know why they didn't go that way. But since they went to the right, uh, we're actually now blocked, and the only way is to go this way. I, don't, I mean, I don't know why we couldn't go through the trees, if you're thinking about it, like, realistically. <laughs> but oh well. 
So we go over here and there's actually another, another little gate right here, which is unusual. And I, I think the explanation is that since we did something at the Millennial Fair, um, like like a chain reaction made um, like time gates open up in certain areas. So that's why we have. Um, well, let's see. I think there's uh, a total of eighteen. Cause there's nine. There's uh, when we get to a certain spot, there's like nine um, in total spots that we can activate, and we can go to certain things there. But I don't know. It's there's there's probably at least like twenty or so like actual gates like this, but they they eventually connect to one place at some point for some reason. <laughs> but anyway, so we go into this. Unknown time gate and it actually takes us to a completely different uh, time error. And as we can see, it actually goes into the future. But how far in the future is, we don't know. So this uh, this little door there and the little chest there, they come into play a lot later, probably near the mid of the game. And um, so uh, I wouldn't really suggest using a, a, a shelter here. I mean, I know you can get them abundantly, but um, there's a, a thing that we can use uh, just in this thing over here that um, pretty much allows us to recover everything. Um, but if we go over here... Uh, if you talk to this guy, he actually has uh, two iron equipments there that we can use. And um, I'm speeding this up there because it takes a while for me to get all that stuff all done there. I, I pretty much just get all the, the new stuff there and then I sell off the old stuff. And then I get... Um, and then I get uh, some... Some um, well, I I didn't have enough to get like the the suits there, so I had to like get the the helmets first and sell up the old equipment, and then get the uh, armor because then I had enough. And then then this part here is just me getting some some healing items, just getting them up to par. And then there we go. So right there. Well, that's that's all the uh, the managements I do right there. And um, all the way on the left side over here, you'll see this little um, machine that's just to the left of the door here. And if you examine it, you, you can actually sleep in it. It's kind of like a, I think, what, what they call that, an Enertron or something like that? I can't remember what it was called. Um, the, the, I think the guy on uh, just the right, well, right next to it, I guess, is, is the one that uh, will tell you. Yeah, Enertron, yeah. And uh, if you just try to talk to the machine there, it will actually ask you if you want to go in it. And if you say yes, you go in it, and it, it, just a few seconds there, you'll get fully recovered. And uh, it'll get this thing where it says you're still hungry, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, so yeah. So that's it for this area here. So now we're going to go to the, uh, this, the northern stuff here, which is, uh, I think it's called Lab 16. This right here, just kind of follow the little dirt road right there. And uh, this is where we start to get into the enemies down here. These uh, these rats right here, if you run into them, they will steal a tonic from you. And um, so, yeah, just, uh, just uh, really don't worry about your, your tonic getting stolen because uh, they're, they're cheap. Like... It's not, it's not really anything to worry about. Um, I, I think if you don't have any, I think they steal other things, I think. So just kind of like stock up on that if you're going to go run through it uh, like I'm doing. 
But, uh, but anyway, so we got uh, these new guys here. Um, the green bird thing there, I would kill that first. Um, if you come across these guys, uh, because uh, that thing does heal and it is annoying. So, um, I actually managed to get rid of one of the little squid thingies there. The octopods. Um, so yeah, I would I would get rid of this thing first. And then, then you can get rid of everything else. Other than that, these guys are not really that hard. Um, probably a few, few hits here and there, but uh, nothing that will take too long. So that's uh, so that's it for that. Um, right now, uh, you'll see me check my my checkpoints here, and actually, everybody is really close. Uh, Luca and Chrono are really close to getting their um, next skills there or tech uh, abilities. And uh, this right here, uh, it's the same enemies, and I cut past, I cut past uh, this battle right here, just to the result screen part. And uh, so then we get uh, them learning them. That's to show off, I actually did learn them. And there we go. So we get another uh, load so there, it's just something to sell. Um, or if you didn't manage to go that secret way that I showed you. And uh, so there's a load bow that is for that's for Maro. She's uh, she's the one that has the bows there. So anything dealing with bows that goes to her. And uh, I, I pretty much uh, avoid like 80% of the the battles here. Um, some of them I can't get by them because they're in the path. Um, See so like that right there. I can pass that. So. Um, so this is me checking how many tonics I had left, and I actually. Uh, only have four. I was actually also managing my inventory space just to organize it more. And um, so yeah, so these guys uh, right here, they're they 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 don't bode well with um, with special attacks. Um, so they, I would do uh, special attacks against them and not normal attacks because uh, normal attacks just um, they just miss for some reason like that um, don't use uh, cyclone uh, just uh, for chrono to use his slash attack uh, thing that actually counts as a an attack there and you can also use um, Luca's fire um, thingy there a um, little fire toss or you can use the fire world there and that kind of counts as a magic thing um, I mean, there can be a chance to where you can hit them, but they just have like their um, physical attack uh, percentage is really hot, um, like evade is really high. So, um, so yeah, uh, I would do that when you go against them. And uh, we're actually going to be going against another set here in this one moment. Uh, I'm, I'm using uh, Merle's aura ability to do some healing. And you'll see right here, I, I get another group of three uh, similar uh, goopy enemies there, and I, I cut past them. And uh, so then uh, we go against this uh, big dude right here. Um, he, he actually kind of, um, from what I, what I saw there, he actually kind of has uh, quite a bit of HP there. Um, actually, took a little bit. Um, I thought he was actually going to go down to like two or three hits, but uh, no, he's he's got like... Like 500 HP or something like that. I mean, he's got quite a bit. So um, he he's not hard. It's just uh, he just just has a lot of HP. And um, so there we go. It's probably not too. It's probably more like 200 or something like that because uh, 500 seems a bit much. But but anyways, uh, so I'm gonna go outside here and I'm gonna save just outside right here and that will be the end of the video here. So here we go. So anyways, that's the end of this video here. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And also follow me on Twitter. And I will catch you guys in the next video. So peace.